Hello, everybody. <laughs> and today we're back with another episode, this time with Josh. Josh, want to go into a little bit about yourself? What's up, guys? My name is Josh Bradley. Um, I am a current junior from the University of Alabama that just recently transferred to the University of Maryland Global Campus. For internship uh, purposes, I am an intern at CACI, which is a government contracting agency. Um, a little bit more about myself. Uh, I'm part of uh, Astral Kingdom on the advisory board. Um, the reason why I even got into NFTs and the Astral Kingdom was from a different startup company that I'm a part of with Andrew called Varos. I originally had an idea with one of our other creators to create uh, NFTs for Varos using the organ systems. Uh, but Andrew had other plans, which I think was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and we entered into NFTs using Astral Kingdom, working on yeah. Zodiac signs. And there, there's a little bit about me. Yes, sir. And uh, yeah, Josh, coming that you were from the internship with Khaki as like the government contracting, like on your take, do you see the government as a centralized entity or like decentralized with all the different kind of like departments that they don't really seem to be in really close communication with one another, but it seems like there's all kind of one unit. So it's kind of, I would say it's a mix of both because you have your contracting agencies where the actual government subcontracts all the problems that they have and they give them to these contracting companies to basically solve everything. Um, most contracting companies do a lot of the same functions. Um, they bid on almost all the same contracts except for specific ones like, for instance, Northrop Grumman is going to uh, bid on contracts for aerospace a lot more than khaki would. Uh, khaki is more specific to military grade stuff, uh, working with drones and uh, counter UAS, which stands for unmanned air systems. So that it, it's a little different, but essentially they're all playing the same part. Um, and I, I would say it's more centralized because they all have the same rules and regulations. Uh, mm -hmm. If it was decentralized, everything would kind of be a mess. Gotcha. Yeah. So now mm -hmm. you're scratching that decentralized itch by joining the Astral Kingdom. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Um, yeah. So what actually excites you the most about the whole NFT space or decentralization with the blockchain? Anything in particular? So I, I think the, the biggest thing that excites me about a decentralized space for everything is it, especially the metaverse because the metaverse includes NFTs. Um, I would say it's just the, the unimagined amount of creativity that can be done and the unimagined amount of connections that can be done through the metaverse and through NFTs. We're connecting people from all over the world without having any real regulations on what can be said or what can be done. And I feel that that allows way more creativity and a lot more things to be created in order to help people or to make things a little bit more enjoyable for people's lives. Because for some people, they like, for instance, if you think about someone who may be like bedridden or they don't have the ability to really go out and do things with friends all the time, especially in the pandemic time that we're in, with the metaverse being created that would allow people to not only interact in a virtual world but it would feel almost physical i mean there's there's technology that's being created right now where they have gloves where you can actually feel what you're touching in the metaverse so that, i think that's the most important and the most exciting part for me yeah it seems like the first kind of level of connection was like the texting with one another like with people that are not actually like directly with you and now we have a step above which is the zoom calls and it seems like the metaverse an overlooked aspect for many people may be like how closely you can connect with people that are not physically like nearby. So I think that's exactly. something I definitely look forward to. So on, a, on another topic, um, when it comes to, you know, the education for uh, virtual and augmented reality, you know, we've, we've touched a lot on that with Varos um, being mm -hmm. our main goal is to educate patients. Uh, what, what, Andrew, what do you think would be like the biggest thing coming into the metaverse with virtual and augmented reality for education purposes? And that's a, that's something that the first thought comes to mind is like from med school, cause I was originally on the path to uh, become a doctor. And yeah. right, right now it seems like the anatomy labs, that's something that's gonna be pretty easy to, uh, to improve upon. But I think with personalized medicine, that's a whole another avenue where you're not just creating one design that you're showing to everyone, you're actually taking in the person's like health biometrics and then you're using that to customize the design that they're gonna be seeing. And I think we can 
my my actual thought is uh you can use that as like an nft where let's say you're going to a doctor's office you don't have to deal with having different electronic medical records across different clinics or hospitals you can just have one that's set standard for you that is cross compatible with everything so i think that that's definitely something i look forward to the most and we should definitely grasp that as yeah. soon as we have the ability uh, availability to do that we definitely need to hop on that because that is something that pertains specifically to varos so yeah. that that would that would be very interesting to see one thing that i that i have thought about in through a video that you actually sent me was talking about how certain countries like in uh, the UK, they're starting to use virtual and augmented reality in their uh, prep school systems. So mm -hmm. instead of these kids being in class, you know, doing paperwork or being on the computers, they're in virtual and augmented reality, doing classwork, interacting with students and doing a bunch of other things that weren't specified. Um, I think that could play a way bigger role in the education for let's say industry workers in the metaverse, they could use virtual and augmented reality as an education purpose for industry, uh, for uh, people who would control cranes or who would can po potentially control robotics to lift, le lift levy heavy things. Um, mm -hmm. I think there, there's so many avenues that can be taken with the education uh, portion of virtual and augmented reality in the metaverse. I, I, it's kind of endless. Alex, yeah. what, what do you think? Yeah, um, so as someone that's like a, well, I'm going back to my background, I'm, I'm a STEM major, so I'm doing engineering, and a lot of things that we do is, you know, obviously with math. So one thing that I think is really useful, especially as like a visual learner, is being able to put on augmented reality glasses or virtual rea reality glasses, and then see how these equations that you see on paper that really don't mean much to like most people they can see it on like a graph or a 3d model or something like that i think that's what a lot of people would like be able to learn a lot better through that it's a lot more efficient especially when you're looking at things that it's really hard to imagine um there's a lot of uh, classes that involve electricity and you're thinking about protons and electrons it's really hard to visualize what those look like because they're so small and they're on the on you know the atomic level so i think that's going to be a huge realm especially in education to teach kids how to visualize things because that's such an important aspect in all realms of life and being able to teach them especially especially at a really young age would prepare the next generation immensely i definitely i 100 percent agree with that um actually going back to the like i i happen to get a get a look at like kind of the 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 beginning of the virtual and augmented reality in industry and for like educational purposes although i'm a business analytics major with a minor in data science i still got this internship with bechtel doing and they're nuclear engineering and uh they, they do a bunch of other stuff um like uh, fl uh what is it fluid dynamics and stuff um but they had a program for their virtual and augmented reality set where they were doing um, doing projects for the government where they would be able to get a like a part for like a, one of their nuclear generators and they would be able to take apart a portion and see which portion is actually defective without having to be in the relative area of wherever this nuclear generator is. And that was just like the beginning. I, I really wonder how far we can take it. Like would a, in the future, would we be able to like, say like a TV isn't functioning, would we have like robots in our houses? And there would be just like, you just call up a guy and be like, okay, uh, we need our TV fixed. And he would just, the robot would just be him. He'd put on the VR glasses and then go and go and check out the TV and be like, oh, it's fixed. You know, would this, would this mm -hmm. kind of close off the realm of actual physical interaction? Yeah, I mean, that's something to definitely consider. Uh, like that example that you listed, it seems like a very specific example where like, the nuclear engineers have to fix one component, but I'm trying to imagine it as like everyone's trying to use it all together. And it seems like the biggest kind of um, like limiting factor with that is the actual hardware itself, where like we have to kind of compress so much technology into either glasses that are like the size of this or something that's not going to really obstruct from people's daily lives, like virtual reality glasses or goggles and now we're having like the motion sickness issue with uh, people wearing the VR goggles for over like 30 minutes or 60 minutes. It seems like there's natural barriers of uh, like a part of being either human as like an individual or within society that's kind of blocking this right now. And I'm wondering if that's actually something that's set by design by the human body, uh, kind of give us like a warning flag. This is like maybe, maybe not the best path to be taking down or is this just another aspect of being a human that is just based on evolution easily overcome? 
I, I would I would have to think that it would it, it's definitely an a, adaptation type of thing because it, it took us years to get used to you know being like out on TV screens a hundred percent of the time like back in the in the early 30s and 40s you didn't see uh, parents or adults using a TV screen for their usual forms of entertainment regularly but as time grew on then it became more of a regular thing and now everyone is addicted to it so in that same instance it's going to take us a while to be able to adapt to a, a new form of technology that technically distorts what we're really seeing and obviously for the first generation it's going to be it's going to it's going to be kind of uh dy dysfunctional but as generations kind of progress it's it's going to get easier and easier because it'll be Definitely. more introduced at a younger age mm -hmm. yeah and i think there might there could be a disconnect between um the generation that is old enough where they're kind of seeing everything happen and then the generation that's born into it um you know we were kind of born in the situation where kids, you know, I had my first flip phone, um, maybe in like sixth grade and the iPhone didn't come out maybe until like two years later or something like that. Yep. So, um, and after I remember being in high school and kids that were my age, when I got my first phone, they had iPhones. And now thinking of anyone that doesn't have an iPhone or something that isn't a smartphone is, that's kind of mind boggling. Even, you know, when I talked to my parents about it, so like they still have issues like sending emails with attachments and stuff like that. So. I wonder if our generation, since we kind of bridge the gap between uh, non-smart devices and smart devices, I wonder if we're going to be able to understand everything or if we're going to be kind of um, a replicate of what our parents are. Yeah, I, and, uh, yeah like I work in a, in a clinic right now and it, all these kids come in and they're like crying and their parents just immediately hand them their phone or maybe like an iPad. And they're like in to they're toddlers like in like, carriages. so. It's, it's almost like a, a little alarming to see that trend happening, where maybe right now it's an iPhone, which is minimally addictive compared to the virtual reality where all your senses are engaged. Like what what kind of path are we going down in that way? Um, like who's really to answer that? So that's why I really do see it as important to create the astral kingdom where we're using the, the technology because that's kind of the path that society is on. But we're also maintaining that grounding in what we see as like more important or equally as important as like a, a physical life and uh, as well as like the spiritual life. So when it comes to like the addiction of like phones and whatnot, do you think that, um, so obviously when you when you think of a phone, you think of immediate gratification, right? If people pick up their phones for one reason, one reason only, to get notifications, to text people, to call people, to get that immediate gratification that they are able to talk or interact with someone else, right? But in in uh, in the metaverse or like using virtual and augmented reality goggles for the purpose of interacting with other people, do you think it's a step forward in the right direction or do you think it's another step backwards? Um, personally, I think it's like, a, a, what is it, like a two-sided coin or something like that? It's, it's yep. kind of how, um, you know, you use it. Are you willing to use it responsibly or are you going to abuse the system? I think it's going to be a great way to meet people that otherwise you would not be able to meet other other than like a discussion board or something like that i think it'll be a lot easier you know to see someone kind of in person digitally at least and have that communication aspect and really have that bond whereas you know if you're using it irresponsibly you can kind of get lost in it um you know assume that that's where you're going to spend all your time and forget about um maybe any responsibilities that you do have in the real world because i don't think the responsibilities of the real world are going to go away anytime soon um but i think people might get ahead of themselves and might just become distracted by the metaverse or anything that does come from that and want to just kind of live in that realm for you know a large portion of their lives yeah i mean it brings up the idea that like right now on like the central land or the sandbox you can be like buy actual land and maybe down the line they'll have like metaverse construction companies that will come and code uh, a house for you and then like would you be paying rent or like a mortgage for a house in the metaverse as well as in the real life i mean it seems like this could go any number of ways and i think it's probably not going to be best to just replicate everything that's in our physical life onto the metaverse and uh, that's where i see like it almost like as just a better version of video games where you're not spending 100 percent of your life on the video game like i mean some people may be like as streamers or something but yeah for the most part you're kind of living both lives and one's supposed to optimize the other and vice versa so that's ideally where i see like a happy medium but i'm sure with different cryptocurrencies and actual like forms of making a living on the metaverse i see as a lot of people going deep down that rabbit hole well yes i i i think that's completely true i mean um 
when when I think of like jobs being created in the metaverse i'm not thinking just jobs like i i definitely talked about this with you before andrew but like the idea that basically everything can be done through the metaverse so back to the back to that theory of like uh for industry workers they could be controlling all the machinery but be inside their home in that same instance uh for people who are in like technology jobs like i i could technically be in the metaverse at work for whatever industry i'm in or for we could be in a meeting together for varos through the metaverse and then the same thing applies for schooling so like these kids could never have to leave their rooms again and they could they could be sitting in class in the metaverse in their in their in their whole character outfits and just be sitting at home or you know using a multi dimension like a multi uh multi moving uh treadmill like it, it, it there's too many yeah. too many outcomes to really just say this one is going to be the one because it even when it comes to a video game video games can be endless you can you can make a video game whatever you want it to be and the metaverse being that it's going to be like a whole world if not like a whole universe of things it could literally be like our space time yeah mm-hmm. and uh what you just said about like education it makes me think like would this be almost too far like outlandish of an idea if we didn't have the pandemic forcing everyone to go into zoom classes online or like is that almost like a necessary a necessary step in order to go in this metaverse direction or that just happened happenstance i think it's a little bit too much of a coincidence <laughs> that immediately right when a pandemic hits the metaverse comes in because we have to realize that Facebook, although they changed their name to Meta, they're behind the curve. They were not the initial first ones to really think about starting a whole virtual world. So it, it is a it is quite coincidental. Um, but it I think it is a step in the right direction because there is still countries that are locking down. I mean, we have a new variant of Omicron that's in the US now. And countries like France, uh, South Africa, Australia, um, Hong Kong, all those countries are locking down again. And when when you think about it, I mean, those countries obviously do not have the same rights that we do. So their freedoms can be restricted a lot harsher than ours could. Um, so in that instance, I, I feel that the metaverse could definitely be a step in the right direction for interaction purposes. Yeah, that's a that's a really interesting point, especially uh, if we do have to lock down again, you know, for, maybe for a different um, reason. This could be a method that people feel more comfortable staying inside to prevent any spreading. Um, yep. They'll have more things to do inside, even though that's that's a weird thing to think about. Um, yeah, you can't go outside or anything, but you will be able to, let's say, you know, go to a different planet through the metaverse, or still hang out with your friends that exactly. seem interact like physical, but it's not physical. So it could be a way to. Um, give people like a happy medium um even though they're sacrificing their physical world for a temp- like temporarily um it could be for the better and this could be a way to kind of bridge the the gap between like the unhappy people and the people that are willing to do it anyways yeah and uh, josh like you bringing up those other countries it just makes me remember that there's so many like natural disasters going on all around the world and i feel like i'm devoting so much of my time and energy and building this this astral kingdom so everyone can thrive in this new newly emerging technological world when in reality like the planet that we inhabit is also suffering so it's hard to like really push one to the wayside in order to focus on the other. And I feel like there's got to be some kind of balance. And it, like internally, I just feel like I'm in that dilemma where I'm getting pulled in different directions and wanting to devote my resources. Do you guys feel that way also? I do. I do definitely agree with you, Andrew. There's so much going on in the world that we personally cannot control as an individual. But uh, with the Astral Kingdom being being created, we can not only allocate funds from the Astral Kingdom in order to give back to the actual physical world that we live in, allowing others to help others. Um, it would also allow us to educate ourselves in different ways by traveling and being able to experience different cultures and how things are viewed, which would give us a larger aspect on the actual world instead of just Virginia, because we really yeah. only know like the East Coast, which is, it's kind of crazy to think about that. We are, we are probably in the smallest little portion of land and everything else around us is kind of like concaving in um Mm -hmm. and we we can't really do anything about it but i think that with with the ideology that we have and as long as we keep it we we are going to be able to move forward and actually help and create create a better world 
I think I think the really cool thing about the metaverse is um, the first thing, obviously, being decentralized. Uh, it's going to allow people to hopefully spread ideas a lot quicker um, without having to be centralized or someone kind of um, deciding whether or not something's posted or not. Uh, we're looking. We're also in this era where I think the majority of the country can agree that the leaders are taking care of a lot of the issues that need to be taken care of. Um, Andrew and you were talking about um, how the earth is kind of suffering. There's a lot of like climate issues taken into account, but I think the younger generation understands that there needs to be something to do, but the older generations, they're kind of just allocating resources and things that we don't even believe in. You know, there's this massive disconnect between these generations and hopefully uh, the, the metaverse is going to be a way to uh, help everyone come together instead of you know make this whole division and this this tribalism that we see right now where it's left versus right or something like that i think in general we should be focusing on you know it's the human race and let's forget about the people that are trying to um you know make themselves a lot better than the rest of us like we're the ones are going to have to pay for at the end of the day we're the ones that can have to face the consequences yeah, I mean, going off that, like preserving the environment, I like what Josh mentioned about the cultures, and it'd be interesting to see how either whether it be uh, cultures are preserved on the metaverse or maybe new cultures emerge or how that's even going to play out. It seems like no one's going to want to forget about the world that surrounds them in like the metaverse, but there's going to be so many new communities that are emerging between people of different ethnicities, races, ages and everything. So it seems like a, there's a lot of different combinations that are wait. Definitely, definitely. And also <clears throat> expression of oneself is going to be a lot easier because um, the one thing that I feel that is a huge problem is not only stigmas, but the way people view everyone else's expression. Like we we live in it, well, at least here and a lot of other cultures are very judgmental. You know, they like to stick to their roots and stick to things that they believe in. But belief systems are only as good as you can teach them so for people who are judging others for the way that they express themselves it's not only it's wrong but it doesn't it doesn't allow for anyone to grow right so i feel that the metaverse could be also a way for people to not only express themselves but then grow into what they actually want to be because in the in the world that we live in today at least today who knows about the future uh we don't live in a world that is very accepting so it that that could be another play definitely <clears throat> i think also uh hopefully one issue that that could come up not hopefully but um is you know we're currently seeing the amount of misinformation everywhere um yep. with decentralization that's something that we're also like risking increasing also so i'm not quite sure how that's going to play out but i hope that our generation is smart enough to differentiate you know what is considered like inappropriate to be spreading to everyone consider, compared to you know what's logical what's factual um and yeah, now yeah. with a bunch of different people and a bunch of different cultures they could be um spreading their own truths or spreading their own ideologies that may not be true or may not be um conducive to like a, a happy environment um that we we'll look out for as well yeah. Uh, do you guys have any immediate thoughts about, about the mis misinformation and censorship? I mean, personally, I feel like we don't need any kind of censorship about misinformation and just allow the users to go about trying to determine what is truthful to them. And yes, that, that could cause issues, but I feel like there's plenty of issues with censorship as of right now. So I, I definitely, that's the one, that's another thing that I was thinking about with the metaverse, at least I was thinking about how would the like creators restrict things or how could they make laws for a virtual world where like technically there would be no problems. And what I'm, what I'm guessing it's going to be like almost like realms, right? So in like certain realms, you can do certain things and in others, you can't do those exact same things. Um, but I do not, I think at least I, I hope that the that the creators who are really diving in deep with the the entire world as a whole are not going to allow censorship because it censoring it means it's it's going to turn into almost like a dictatorship so it's 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 not going to be uh freedom of speech and that's everything it's gonna it, it's gonna turn into the same thing that's going on right now they're, they're like there it's gonna become problematic and it's gonna be for the worst Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. And going to the whole censorship thing, a whole issue is who's going to be filtering all this information, 
you know, can we trust this one individual or this group of individuals to be providing us accurate information? Um, and, you know, with all that power, you know, that's a lot of responsibility. And uh, we see it a lot of times where power corrupts. So is it is it worth risking having someone filter out all that information or should we just let it all flow, flow through? And I think that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And I feel like a good way of avoiding all that is just incentivizing the best amount of uh, like any kind of information that benefits one another that is maybe like communally agreed upon. I feel like that's that's optimal. So a part of the Astral Kingdom, we plan to incentivize communication in each of our Discord channels by taking the top rated uh, comments and maybe sharing them on our social medias or whichever way makes the most sense where we can share popularity to the messages being sent by just allowing more attention to be given to that individual. Yes, I, I would definitely agree with that. Um, so when it comes when it comes to like censorship and all all this negativity that could be a possibility in the metaverse, like how 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 can we avoid a dystopian future? <laughs> I mean, the, my first thought about the dystopian future with all of this is just all the, the plenty of mu movies that are out there that just paint humanity in such a, a dim light where it seems like as soon as the technology is available, then we're automatically going to go to our worst behaviors that optimize immediate gratification and greed. And I personally see that as being a potential for the future, but it's something that we should definitely keep on our radar and just look for the warning signs that are blatantly clear in the movies and just try to steer away from those as soon as possible. Exactly. Learn from learn from historical facts. And I definitely, I definitely think that with Astral Kingdom, we're going to be able to not only avoid it, but also push against it if it does become a thing with our our version of how we're going to be working within the metaverse um, by allowing just uh, self expression and then intellectual conversations with other people, you know, allowing allowing for a place where people can just talk and and uh, and just conversate about different topics and not really have to worry about things becoming uh, problematic when it comes to uh, greed um, when it comes to you know the outside world and that type of thing. But one one movie that um that really pulls to me when it comes to like the metaverse or the idea of the metaverse is Ready Player One, because that in that movie they are literally using VR headsets. They are using a multi-directional uh, treadmill and their world is like, there's different versions in every world. Like if you go to one world, you can go surfing. If you go to another world, you can play like this first person shooter where you're just battling it out to win the most money or something. And there's, it's tons of possibilities, but at on the back end there, the world they live in is deteriorating and it's, it's very problematic so that's why they escaped to that that universe um hopefully it does not end up like that yeah i mean i see it as a way to avoid that is by creating one of those ideal worlds in the metaverse that are bridging the gap between the real world like the physical reality and the metaverse and i feel like if we create the astral kingdom in like the metaverse as like sooner rather than later then that should incentivize people to maintain that kind of connection where it seems like in the movie they just put on the technology and they're immersed in these other worlds that disregard the planet around them and that just seems like at that point it's just too late to start building that kind of connection back again or else people are just going to avoid that and go to whatever is most gratifying in the moment exactly exactly um and that's something that our brain naturally does we want that immediate sense of uh of endorphins we, we want, and if they're not getting it from one place, they're just gonna go to the next. I mean, we see it every day when someone goes on TikTok, if they don't like the video, they just scroll to the next until they find a video they really like. And then they're gonna share it with their friends who are then gonna watch it. So we need to really avoid getting into that that space. Um, and with with the Astral Kingdom, um, how, how, how do you see the self-development um, throughout the community like how how would we go about that andrew yeah so right now we have the channels and i'll pull it up right now we have um, like right now the affirmation channel is probably my favorite where i just whatever feeling i have in the moment i'll just type it down and allow others to read it and 
I read others and I feel like, all right, I vibe with that one. I don't with this other one. And ultimately I see that as like a net positive. And then you multiply that times the 11 or so other channels that we have based on other niches about life, uh, mm -hmm. such as like uh, becoming sovereign or the dream interpretation or health and fitness. Like there's so many different things that should be tailored to any individual. Maybe all of them are just one or two. Overall, I think there's a lot of potential there to at least learn or share experiences in some kind of empowering way. Alex, do you have any take on that? Yeah, um, you know, I think it was like last night, I was staying up pretty late, do, late to doing some work. Um, and I was kind of figuring out like, uh, maybe stressing out a little bit too much. And um, one thing that I usually go back to is kind of look at my phone and I have like this list of quotes that um, I find really inspirational. So that's something I always revert back to when I'm kind of at a low. And I think a lot of people, if they took the time, um, I think they would really get a, get a lot from that because it's it's sometimes like that extra boost that you need to get you through that last problem or, or to get you through that day. Um, when you hear someone else encouraging you and kind of like being a cheerleader for you, that really makes you want to push forward and, and really achieve your goals. So I think a lot of people would, um, would really appreciate having someone always uh, writing down affirmations or making sure that you're going to be okay or that they're looking out for you and that people do care about you. Alex, I love that. I, I mean, when you think about in like the day to day lives, when people have interactions, like for instance, in like high school, you know, there's always, you know, you got your popular group, you got your nerds, you got your athletes, and then you just have those regular people that are just going to school because they have to. And they don't usually have a support system that allows them to really uh, maintain a positive outlook on what their lives are going to be like. And in, in the instance of the U.S., we have one of the highest suicide rates just and that's a, that is a hundred percent a first world problem we don't know how to find real happiness because of how greedy this country is because we are so capitalistic and we don't value people's lives we value people's people's efforts we value what people can do for other people we don't value oh what is this person doing that's so creative or so unique to this person and i feel like with this discord channel and and any other things that we create, we're allowing people to really get to see what their value is, like how we and other people in the Discord value each other. And I think that that's probably one of the most important things to, to keep moving forward is um, if, if, you, if you can't get value from other people and you don't know your own self-worth yet, you're bound to fail. And yeah. If we're if we're giving a space for people to not only show that they care about others, but also allow for people to find their self value, their self worth, it, we we're gonna grow the creativity of multiple people. So I, I think that that's extremely important. Yeah, and going off that, like you said, with the people in high school that kind of go there, they don't really have their solid group of friends, their support network in their school. So maybe they'll go home and play some video games where they have a, a close community of people that they maybe know personally or maybe don't have never actually met in person before. And I feel like that's not really going anywhere. So we might as well tailor towards that, at least to some degree. And I feel like with the metaverse, maybe you'll be doing um, quests and other games and you'll be getting experience points and leveling up whatever your, your item is. I feel like we can do that, but with the spiritual progression or maybe physical progression or something like that. So yep. that's where the idea comes in with the chakras, where maybe you can have a clan of people and you're all trying to gain your heart chakra in some way. So you go and you do this charitable event that gives love to others or something like that. You know, like there's so many different possibilities. And if you're able to perform those tasks and then be given an upgrade to your NFT, which then you can sell for money or just maybe like show off to whatever kind of girl you're trying to impress or what have you, there seems yeah. like there's that, that's more worth the time in my eyes than, than playing a, a video game where you're just getting experience points or something. I definitely, mm -hmm. I definitely agree. And I, I feel like it would allow people to continue to gain real meaning instead of just having a facade of something that's, that's completely virtual. Um, mm -hmm. That it, it would allow people to, that, that especially would allow people to stay connected to the real world and real world issues um, and not really just get to escape. Uh, that that that's fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is quite sad how how superficial things have gotten, and I think that's kind of um, our responsibility to kind of try and end that wave that has come across like our generation. Unfortunately, you know, we're, we are pretty much the first generation to deal with social media 
and nobody really was understanding what was being put in front of us, especially when you're in high school, like you were saying, um, you're having all these images thrown at you, um, all these perfect people or um, these perfect bodies and how they're represented. And, you know, at the end of the day, you're 14 or you're 15, you don't know that that's fake. You don't know that that's not real. Um, you, you haven't developed anything. You haven't seen that much. So I think that's going to be one thing that um, we should really take ser seriously is, is helping these kids move away from that and understand that there's a lot more to life than all those superficial aspects. I would say I'm optimistic in that way. It seemed like the first wave was maybe these uh, Instagram models that were showing off their bodies. But now I see on Twitter, there's a whole wave of these pseudonymous individuals that maybe their username is something.eth and then the profile picture is an NFT where there's no link to an actual person, but they're consistent in that name and uh, account every single time they post. And at that point, they're not really showing their, their worth by showing off their bodies or something like that. I think that's kind of the, the the trend that's going on right now where maybe the the young kids will see that like well it's not really tied to me as an individual it's more so like what i can contribute given this identity that i i embody in the the realm of the technology or the internet or what have you yeah valuing valuing the creativity of the mind is so much more important than you know looking at someone's body because i i it's funny but like now if you see someone posts on instagram or it's like a supermodel or something at our age now we can be like oh yeah this person has lip injections you know they got a bbl or they you know they they got uh they got what is it called um uh when you get like the the boobs the bigger boobs they Boob they jumps. have breast <laughs> implants um and it, it, you can automatically tell because it, it it does not look natural but for the younger kids they're looking at this and like oh this is going to be the perfect girl i need to find a girl like this but in reality they will never find that and for those people they're always looking for something so superficial so in the in the real world they're going to be looking at everyone and being like oh you guys you guys are trash and but it's it's not giving value to the people they could be beautiful but like or they could be like the best looking guy ever but it, it doesn't matter because to them they're like oh i need to be like the biggest guy on instagram or i need to be like this hot model on instagram and it just leads to all this negativity. So and it seems like, yeah, I'm sorry. No, 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 go ahead. I was gonna say like the, the root of that, it seems like you're forming your own idea of what you're attracted to based on what society kind of projects as what's attractive based on these social scores or something. And that seems like there's a need for people to kind of go within and feel like, why am I attracted to this or that? And what, like what benefit does it have to me and those around me so i feel like again that's why these meditation kind of circles or maybe some kind of discussion group on the, the discord could be beneficial and helping people come to that more of a an individualist concept of what actually is meaningful to them whether that be attraction or what have you yeah and that that i think that's that's the most important point that we we need to have and we need to keep um self-preservation you know not not allowing trends that are posted by the one percent to sway our thinking on others um keeping almost it's almost like keeping your mind as innocent as possible you know not not allowing yourself to uh to just dive into something that you you definitely know can be a hundred percent wrong um and really just uh putting an emphasis on keeping your mind true to yourself yeah yeah you gotta keep keep your integrity yeah i completely agree uh, any closing thoughts you guys no i think i think that was great guys um can't yeah. wait for the next podcast <laughs> uh and um you know let's see you tomorrow yeah, tomorrow <laughs> we do it all over again yes, sir. all right